Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. In this episode, I'm going to continue with the Deimos mission. I'm in as much suspense as anyone else, so I wanted to get this done as soon as possible. Well, not as soon as possible. I'll probably launch another pair at, per the suggestion of somebody in the comments, because uh, just as backup and also so that we can try for the other transfer window in 19 days, or actually about 20 days. So we'll try for that transfer window as well. But first of all, let me plot the transfer for this one and see if I can hit it. Uh, it's not a guarantee, obviously, that I can get a transfer to Mars with a reasonable amount of delta V. So yeah, let me take some time to try that out. Obviously, we're at roughly the right phase angle, but there's all this eccentricity and inclination and all that stuff to deal with as well. And we don't, I don't feel like we have too much spare delta V because we have to manually, we have to use thrust in order to slow down at Mars. We can't really aerobrake, and that's going to take quite a bit of juice as well. Well, I've tried to plot what Transfer Window Planner has suggested, and I don't see how it works at all. Uh, so I've, I've tightened up the departure window to the next two days. But basically it's going to be the same numbers any time during this time. And ejection delta V is more than I expected. But uh, if we take a look, it's actually got a neat little feature here called show ejection angles. And the benefit of that is if we zoom in here, it shows you where you need to make your node. See, there's the orbit. And the ejection angle is clockwise away from your orbit. And so what we'd like is, or well, maybe maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Well, I think that's where you, you're supposed to put the node. But maybe, yeah, I think that's where you're supposed to put the node. I've got the numbers the same as it has in here, prograde delta V, normal delta V. And it's just not hitting Mars at all. I could pull the node and see if I make it aligned with my orbit and see if that works out. But there's definitely no encounter here. I can make an encounter, um, but I think it'll cost quite a lot of delta V. So I think I've been fooled again by all these tools. I always get fooled by these tools. So if I move it over here now, it's in line with my orbit. But I don't think that's going to get a magical encounter here either. No, indeed. All right, so it looks like I'm not going to be able to use... Uh, transfer window. I, I don't understand it. I just don't. Uh, it might be this ejection inclination. Maybe I'm just at the wrong inclination. Something that uh, it didn't expect. But I'm not too sure what 2.32 degrees would have done for me. Alright, good news. We do have a possible encounter. Bad news, of course it costs more than I thought it would. Um, 4,000 is the initial burn, and then we have a mid-course plane change of 900. So 5,000 altogether, which is a heck of a lot more than the 4,000 I was planning on. So an extra 1,000 meters per second just to get there. And it's not letting me plot, how, uh, plot for orbit, so I don't know how much it's going to take to actually get into orbit. It's very touchy. Uh, every hundredth of a uh, meter per second, it wants to mess with things. But you see, when I try and plot for orbit at periapsis, it decides to give me this alternate orbit and put the node there. And if I tried to just type in negative 1000, for instance, which would probably not get us into orbit, it uh, doesn't really do anything. In fact, it does the opposite of what I think it should do, I think. Let's see. 2200. Oh, okay, there we go. It's got an orbit. All right, so it worked this time. But, I mean, we can get into orbit around Mars. It's just a matter of how much it actually takes to hit Deimos and then get into that very peculiar orbit that we need to. All right, well, we'll try it. Let's try it. We have no time to lose. We do have a lot of oxygen to lose. Now, we do have signal delay to worry about through all this, not to mention communications. Okay, settling the fuel down. Ignition. 
Okay, and on we go. Okay, getting ready for the end of this stage. It looks like we didn't cover as much of our maneuver with this stage as I was hoping for. We're gonna need more than a thousand one hundred meters per sec. Well, more than a thousand meters per second from the next stage. I'll uh, use up the Arizona N204 from these tanks down here. Well, I don't know. That'll cause us to deviate more from prograde as usual, so maybe I should quit that. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's stop that. Okay. Not the direction I thought we were going in. All right. Power up. Very stable. No maneuver node. Darn it. Well, anyway, ignition. This says 5,500. That's more than I thought was going to be in here. All right. I'll take it, though. I forgot that we had 5,500 in here. That's pretty amazing. I thought, uh, for some reason, I thought it was 4,000 something. All right. And shut down. Okay, let's use some RCS to finish this off. I, well, that seems to be going in the wrong direction. Looks like we have an encounter with the mid-course plane change. Alright, uh, let's tweak it with the maneuver node editor and try and get it closer in. And see what we can do about Deimos. It would be helpful if we could like get right at Deimos on the orbital burn, but that's wishful thinking. I have to get close to Mars to get its help to get into orbit. Nope, it doesn't look like I can combine the burns. And now suddenly this is actually hitting Mars. That's not what I wanted. Yep, I don't know what else is going to happen, but let's get away from Earth and check out our power situation. Okay, well that is a lot of drain, but let's angle towards the sun now. Then again, our solar panels are not going to be very helpful later on. Okay, so I'm going to take it out of Earth SOI and then we'll take a look at whether we should, we should probably launch the other, uh, at least another pair and try for that window. I'm gonna lock the battery here. I'll leave that battery free. Okay, out it goes. Drain is still pretty high considering we have to go all the way out to Mars. Okay, well it looks like everything's still in the works. All right, let me go back to the the space center and see what I can do with the other probe to solve this probe's problems. Okay, so I've made some changes to the Deimos 1. I made a Deimos 1A with larger solar panels. Not entirely sure it'll be enough, but uh, we'll go with that. And then I've got a Deimos 2A here, and here I've changed the engine and the fuels. Instead of using the RD58 that we were using with kerosene and oxygen, I used the only one that had sufficient thrust and not too much thrust, plenty of ignitions, and also had storable fuels. And that engine was, no not the A4, where is it? Um, the Agena engine, the Agena vacuum engine. And so it has almost 70 kilonewtons. Actually, the variant I've got here has 70. And if we take a look, it's the Bell 8247, 70.7 kilonewtons, 291 seconds of ISP, and 16 ignitions. It, has, it requires ullage, but that means that we don't need to use a pressure-fed tank, which means we can use the default tank instead of the service module tank, which is a lot heavier. By the way, a curious fact, um, it seems to have a, a cryogenic thing going here. I, I wonder if the fact that I can't select cryogenic is actually a bug. 
In fact, to get to service mod, you'll have to go like this. So that's interesting. Anyway, um, let's make sure we've got the right fuel in here. UDMH and inhibited red fuming nitric acid, three. Okay, and now in order to accommodate the heavier fuel, I've had to add another core here. It is the Delta Avionics package. So we've got an extra core there. And our launcher, I believe, can handle it. I said during the launch of the previous mission that our launcher could do a lot more. Here we've got a payload of 22.59 tons. It's possible that um, it'll have to use some of the fuel here in the payload itself to complete orbit, but that'll be fine. So now overall it has less delta V than the RD-58 did because the RD-58 had better ISP, right? It has 338, not 291. Uh, so that's a downside. The upside, no boil off, right? So yes, the RD-58 had a lot, of, a lot of extra delta V, but if we wanted to avoid boil off with the RD-58, we'd need service, the service module tank, which is a lot heavier, and so that would negate the benefit. Uh, I've checked. Uh, this version has more delta V than the RD-58 with the service module tank. Though, come to think of it, hold on a sec. I need to re-examine that. That's before I added the Delta Core and resized the tank. What if we did put the RD-58 here? So close to using the Agena engine. But uh, let's say I did go to Service Module Tank and put it like this. Well, this is uh, only 6,237. It's a little bit less mass though. We'd have to lengthen it to make it the equivalent mass. I call it uh, 6,400. Yeah, this clearly does better. This has uh, 7,000, almost 300. So more than, more than 700 meters per second better. I think I'll go back to 14 minutes flat on this tank. Now it says 32 days, which is longer than we actually have. But I'll try to rush build it a little bit. If it turns out that we can't finish it in time, we might have to launch either later than the actual window, or I'm going to have to use one of the other Deimos 2s, the unmodified ones, and just try and hit the transfer, uh, hit the rendezvous a little bit quicker. That would help. If we could rendezvous quicker, there wouldn't be any boil off before having to make the transfer window. Okay. Oh, I also put the uh, faster launch clamps on the Deimos 1A. So that was part of my edits there. Rush. Rush even more. Actually, rushing is going to cost way more than the actual rocket does. Okay, that gets us... Looks like, uh, looks like we should launch the Deimos 2 first and then launch the Deimos 1. And that'll get us about right. Okay. All right, we will do it that way. I'll still keep the Demos 2 on the second slot since, yeah, since otherwise I'll mess everything up. Oh, somebody mentioned that I should transmit the signs from the probe around the moon that fulfilled that contract, the scanner. I think I'll go to that. Well, let me try and jump to that now. I think I'm close to RAM limit. I'll need to restart. Uh, all right, analyze data. All right, we can transmit this science for 100% of the value, 24 science. All right, the Deimos 2A is complete, so we will now launch. And we'll see whether the FASA launch clamps continue to hold it steady, or whether that was just a fluke event, and it turns out that the FASA launch clamps are not the solution. Okay, here we are. Looks like we will have to time warp a little bit. Uh, there was a bit of a wobble, but not much. All right, throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch.
Okay. So I'll try and get into tighter orbits this time, I think. Hey, that'll be helpful. Alright, everything looking good. We're at 14 kilometers. 50 degree pitch. Taking advantage of the very powerful stages all through this rocket. Okay, waiting for our booster separation. We have throttled down to limit G-forces. Currently approaching 64 kilometers in altitude. Alright, set. Separation is good, and throttle up. Alright. No problems there. Now it's a heavier payload this time. So it's gonna have a lot more work to do to get it to orbit. We'll see if it can do it on its own stages or whether the Gina engine will have to do some of the work. And let's see if the Agena engine will actually work well. It looks like Test Flight doesn't even know about the Agena. I could have sworn that Test Flight would know about the Agena engine, but apparently not. So, no problems there. Now, Test Flight has been updated, and probably all the engines are now properly configured. Uh, so, I will need to update Test Flight. But, at this stage in the game, I don't think I want to reintroduce... I mean... Uh, we'd have to go back and do engine testing as if we were uh, uh, starting out again. Really, it would make it would have made more sense if uh, we had been doing it all along. So I don't know. I might wait until I start a new series to just get the new test flight in. I'll think about it. I'm curious to see whether I can get the fairings off properly. I don't know, it is a bit of a risk, but it is a fairly slender body, so maybe they'll clear all right. Let's see. Yeah, all good. Okay, here we go. Step. And ignition. Something was overheating, probably on the on the previous stage. Okay, we are approaching Apoapsis now. Still got two minutes to burn here. Maybe I should put a little bit more of a pitch in, but it might not be a problem. I guess I'll put a few more degrees in. Well, at the rate things are going, it doesn't look like I'm going to get to the Mars end of all of this. We're going to have to do the docking between this and the module we're going to send up next and then get this part, this secondary mission if you will, on its way to Mars. I think I'll have to conclude the episode with that and we'll have to wait until the next episode to get to the Mars and the things and see whether any of it actually works. And I'm, I'm as bummed out of about that as you are. Uh, it looks like that's how things are shipping up. At least we're doing this one substantially differently from the last one. We're getting into a much tighter orbit as you can see. Totally different engine here for the transfer. The Agena engine. We haven't used this engine at all yet. So that's interesting. We've got a little bit of an oscillation going here, probably because of high g-forces. Pretty close to the end of this burn. Well, the Gina engine better be as described, otherwise we're going to have problems. Well, we've already got problems here. Okay, uh, let's have RCS stabilize this, maybe. Let's get rid of the... Okay. RCS not doing the greatest job ever at this point. 
Uh, this certainly exceeded the payload capacity of the launcher. So the launcher is about a 20 ton launcher to low Earth orbit. Okay, very stable. All right, let's see how it does. Okay, that's good enough. We have reached orbit 213 by 172. And that will be fine for a future rendezvous. Okay, and power is working out nicely. I don't remember resizing the solar panels here. Maybe I did. Okay. Alright, so this is all set. Now we have to get the next mission in line with it. That may or may not be tricky. Okay, here we go. Alright, these launch clamps seem to have... Uh, done the trick and prevented any wobble so it is these that are good maybe the other are fast launch clamps I have two types of fast launch clamps on the other rocket maybe they're both equally useful anyway uh, well we need to time warp a little bit to, to launch to the same node mm, toggle pump that doesn't seem to have helped fuel on Okay, it's fuel on. So toggle pump doesn't do anything. Fuel on gives us more electric charge. Only one unit per second though. So even if I turn them all on, we're still gonna have a drain. But it's much better off than it was otherwise. All right, time warping. Uh, let's Let's target our target. Okay, we should be pretty close to it. Look at the distance to target and the relative inclination. They're both going down. We would want to launch ahead of it. Not behind it, since it's lower. But I don't think we got to end up too far ahead of it. It's got to be ahead of us. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get lower than it to minimize the amount of time it takes. Okay, very well. Ignition. And launch. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound, pretty definitively. And everything is looking good, headed towards max Q. This is a pretty straightforward rocket though, so no particular aerodynamic forces. Yes, there is a slight cone going on here. This diameter is less than that diameter, which means there is pressure on this entire surface. Not the best thing to do, but in this case not a huge problem. The reason I did that is simply because I needed to fit the two engines down here, but if we actually made it that diameter, it'd be a very tiny stubby rocket and I wanted it to be a little bit taller. Just for looks. Alright, we have throttled down. Still a long ways to go. We've actually got double the delta V to burn than we have already got in velocity. And we would like to be fairly flat for that. Actually, I'd like to be as tight in as possible so that we can catch up with the target. Okay, coming close to the end of the stage. We are flat. And that's the end of that. Sep. Bottle up. And ignition. And indeed, there does not seem... It, it can reignite, but I didn't put in any RCS to help sell the fuel down or anything like that. 
Alright, separating the fairings. We could use the RCS units up here to do the trick, but then we're going to be reducing the amount of fuel we have left over for later on. Okay, we are currently going down and fast, but uh, our vertical speed is now going to recover. And hopefully we will recover into a nice low orbit to catch up with our target. Okay, that's not working out right. Our apoapsis is going way out of control now. Okay, I've got a low periapsis, so what I'm gonna try and do is bring my apoapsis down and hopefully that'll allow us to speed up. We've still got 280 meters per second in this stage. And so I'll use some judicious amounts of RCS to turn us around. Let's get the solar panels out while we're here. Okay, fuel is very stable. I'm gonna say retrograde here and then I am going to reignite okay well our periapsis is going down too so that looks like the best I can do for now well we'll have the stage tag along oh look at our boil off we're pretty much not going to have any fuel left in that uh, RD-58 stage anymore anyway. Oxygen going away. Delta V going away. We can probably ditch it. Yep, all of our liquid oxygen is gone now. Zero Delta V left in that stage. Well, at least we're not relying on the RD-58 for the transfer. We we just had it as a spent stage. So good thing we fixed the other one. Though, since we're time warping with this mission, we probably wouldn't have had the boil off on the other one because boil off doesn't happen when you are not focused on the vessel. Sort of a cheaty flaw there. I think we're gonna have this side do the first half of it. And I'm probably going to do that with RCS. Anyway, let's let go of this spent stage. Insufficient avionics? Oh no. Oh no. Really? Wait, how do we get to five? I guess the solar panels? Just increasing the size of the solar panels? Hmm. Well, we can't use the main engines. And I can't activate RCS. Well, okay, we're just gonna have to work with this, I guess. Alright, let's go to the other mission and have it do all the work. Okay, that gets us to 31.3 kilometers, and a little bit closer, at least creates some sort of tangency. Right. Next adjustment will be at that descending node right there. Okay, and here we go with the second approach adjustment burn. Okay. 3.5 kilometers. Alright, let's head over there. Um, could be nice if we got some sun. I'm still not 100% sure which one is actually the mission and which one is the spent stage. I'm assuming the one that isn't called probe is the mission, but that's not necessarily true. Because they've both got controller cores on them. 
using a lot of ignitions here. Thank goodness I have 16 of them. Okay, coming out of time warp. Is the docking port on this end? I mean, it ought to be, right? It's facing that po portion right there. Let me see. What's the docking port in? Nope, nope. Looks like it's uh, the other way around. That's not very helpful. We're going to have to go right past it and then flip around. Deploy bumper. What? I'm almost afraid to ask. What is the bumper? And is it a good thing to deploy? Deploy bumper. Oh. I guess it extends the ring a little bit? I don't know. I did just fine without the bumper being deployed, so... On the previous pair of missions, so... I think we'll not do the bumper. I should have dumped that hydrazine. Once again, I'm carrying hydrazine that I really didn't need. Totally forgot about that. I had bigger changes to make. Okay, we are lining up pretty well here. Now under 40 meters. I don't know. Uh, what I think ought to be true and what Mechjeb is telling me with the closest approach distance. I don't quite agree. I think I should be going more like this. But then the closest approach distance increases. On the bright side, we did encounter some good magnetism with these docking ports. For some reason, the indication on Mechjeb was totally wrong. Go figure. Oh, we got magnetism already. How are these propellant only docking ports so magnetic and the ones that people actually go through don't have any of it? Strange. Alright. Okay, so let's rearrange our stages. So we've got 3,730 left in this stage, which is much better than we had on the previous attempt so that's good and it's storable I believe this tank is locked no it's not hmm why aren't we reading Delta V then from this stage I don't know okay well anyway we've got this mission set let me try and plot out a transfer without dipping back into the atmosphere we're pretty darn close aren't we Okay, well, it looks like we can get a pretty close pass at Mars with even less than we did with the earlier mission. So, 3,814 at the first maneuver, and then the mid-course adjustment, 826 meters per second. So, about 300 meters per second less if we do it right. That's excellent. And, of course, we're starting off with more Delta V to begin with. So, looks like this might be good. It's got more power, it's got all sorts of good stuff going for it. Okay, so uh, let's get to the maneuver and get started. Um, it is going to take longer to burn this, it looks like 13 minutes. So we should start out at about 8 minutes beforehand, maybe 7 and a half. I do just want to do it in one burn instead of doing two burns. That's partly because I'm running out of real lifetime gotta get this done we are going up so in theory this should not cause too much of a problem in terms of dipping back into the atmosphere part of the reason why it's cheaper for us this time might be because we are closer to the planet okay here we go Yep, looks like from this point it's lifting both sides of our orbit. 
No worries. We've passed the maneuver node, and it looks like we did start a bit late because normally when you hit the maneuver node you want to be halfway through the burn, and we are not quite there yet. Otherwise things to be look, uh, look to be going alright, and we'll be using about 100 meters per second, maybe 200 meters per second from the next stage, let's say, based on deviations from the node, but also right when we started out it looked like we were about 100 meters per second short on this stage. So we'll see how it shapes up. Okay, we are now on escape and getting close to the end of this burn. Uh, okay, but I need to lighten up the load up here, otherwise I won't be able to control it. So, let me... Hold on. I've activated the Arizina N204 up there. Doesn't seem like the RCS ports are doing anything though. That's worrisome. But when I decouple the decoupler and the docking port, it should be alright. Right? Maybe? I don't know how much they actually weigh. Could I transfer some of the fuel down? Seems like a really weird way of doing it. Looks like we can. We can transfer fuel now. But rather than doing that, I'd actually rather transfer the fuel up. But, okay. So what I'm gonna do is, we don't have enough time to do that. I'm gonna F5 for safety. Just in case it turns out that I don't have control. Okay, quick saving. It worries me that the RCS ports aren't even responding. So that's weird. But alright, it's quick saved. Let's separate. Let's try that again. And this portion has control, hopefully. Um, okay, now the RCS is working. All right, uh, very good. So, unfortunately, we do not have our maneuver node, but let's throttle up, check the Estes engine, and engage. Let's just take a look at the situation. All right, I believe that will do the trick. Let's see. Okay, that looks pretty close. Well, not actually close to Mars itself, I suppose. There we go. All right, and it looks like we've got 5,250 left. So we'll have about 4,000 when we get there. This definitely has a better chance of making it. But still no guarantees whether this one will make it. Don't know exactly how much it'll take to rendezvous with Deimos once we get there. Okay, let's get it out into the sun, oriented properly. Looks like 823 meters per second will do it for the mid-course adjustment. Okay, looks like that will do the trick. So this is going to be on its way out. I want to use SAS so it doesn't deviate from its current orientation. And that will do it for me in this episode. So we've got two probes on their way to Mars and hopefully one of them will fulfill the mission. We should try and pick up a Phobos contract if it turns out that the mission is already completed by the first one to reach Mars. Alright, so it is on its way. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.